Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzam. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 23rd of June. Authorities in India's flood hit Assam state intensify relief efforts. India says will support crisis hit Sri Lanka's economic recovery. And Taliban officials' residents take stock of Afghan quake damage. And now for all the details. Authorities in India's flood-affected northeastern Assam state on Thursday intensified relief efforts with Air Force helicopters dropping off food and other supplies to stranded people. The deluge has displaced about 5.5 million people and killed over 100 since late May. Indian Air Force helicopters were deployed on Thursday to drop food and other supplies to cut off communities in India's northeastern Assam state, which has been badly hit by floods that have killed more than 100 people in about two weeks. Assam's Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma also conducted an aerial survey to assess the damage in flood-affected Silchar, most of which was underwater. About 5.5 million people have been displaced across Assam of which 3.7 million are staying in government-run makeshift shelters, where government and humanitarian organizations are involved in providing health and basic facilities. There is a diarrhea and bukhar, and people don't get so much nutrition. There is a lot of pain, there is a lot of BP high, they don't get a routine, so they don't get a lot of pain. So they have to give all of them. और बाद में आप बच्चों का भी ठीक है लेकिन थोड़ा सा vomiting है diarrhea पानी पानी जो यहाँ पे पानी का problem है तो vomiting diarrhea ही सब है बस उसी के लिए rescue teams also used boats to supply essential items to stranded people the monsoon brings heavy rains to South Asia between June and October often triggering floods in low lying parts of Assam and neighbouring Bangladesh where rivers swollen with waters pouring out of the Himalayas often burst their banks. India's Foreign Secretary Vinay Mohan Quatra held talks with Sri Lanka's President and Prime Minister on Thursday as India signalled its willingness to go beyond the 4 billion US dollar in loans, swaps and aid that it has already provided to its cash-strapped neighbour. Quatra told President Gotabaya Rajpaksa that India stands ready to help Sri Lanka in quick economic recovery through promoting investments connectivity and strengthening economic linkages. Indian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakchi informed on Twitter. The Indian delegation also held a separate meeting with Prime Minister Ranil Vikrame Singhe, the Central Bank Governor and Finance Ministry officials. India has been the principal source of foreign assistance to Sri Lanka this year, supplying more than $4 billion, Vikrame Singhe told the parliament this week. The neighbours are also in talks for additional support including a $500 million credit line for fuel and help with importing fertiliser and rice as Sri Lanka attempts to stave off a food crisis, officials said. A news from Pakistan. Pakistan's ousted Premier Imran Khan has said that the leaders in the coalition government were afraid that he would appoint Lieutenant General Faiz Hamid, the former spy agency chief, as the next army chief. But he had no such plan. He said the incumbent rulers are afraid of the country's powerful army as they know that their corruption will be caught at some point. Pakistan's ousted Premier and opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan said on Wednesday that the parties in the coalition government were afraid he would appoint former chief of spy agency ISI, Lieutenant General Faiz Hamid, as the next army chief. But he had no such plan. Khan said that the incumbent rulers claim that he wanted to appoint an army chief of his choice, but he never took such a decision that was not based on merit. He berated the leaders of the PMLN-led government for allegedly murdering the institutions and appointing their own people to every institution. 
They are afraid of the army and the ISI as they know that their corruption will be caught at some point, he said. I never thought that I need to be my army chief. Nawaz Sharif has always violated his love and merit of his army chief. Because he has a need for it. So much more than 30 years, so much more than 30 years, so much more than 30 years, so much more than 30 years. Khan has been lately holding a series of public gatherings to demand fresh elections, claiming that the US conspired in his ouster in a parliamentary vote in April, a charge Washington denies. But reports suggest he had lately fallen out with the country's powerful military over differences for the appointment of country's top intelligence chief. The military has directly ruled the country for almost half its nearly 75-year history. It viewed Khan and his conservative agenda favorably when he won election in 2018, but that support waned over the appointment and economic troubles. Moving on, political activist Mumtaz Hussain has blamed Pakistan, has been misusing the Schedule 4 of Anti-Terrorism Act in Gilgit, Baltistan to muzzle dissenting voices. He said people in the illegally occupied region cannot even demand their basic rights amid fear of intimidation and imprisonment. Prominent political activist in Gilgit, Baltistan, Mumtaz Hussain has blamed Pakistan of misusing Schedule 4 of Anti-Terrorism Act in the illegally occupied region to muzzle reasonable voices that resist its repression. Under Schedule 4 1997, people with affiliation with banned outfits or previous criminal record are kept under surveillance. But Hussain said Islamabad has illegally framed dozens under the law and arbitrarily detained and persecuted scores of rights activists and locals, not only to give itself a free reign to rule the region, but also to send a threatening message to all sections of the society. We are fighting our rights and the law. And we want to fight our rights. We don't want to speak to our rights. We don't want to speak to our rights. और हम जो चाहें वो हम करेंगे इसीलिए इन्होंने जो जिन लोगों पे टेररिज्म जो टेररिस्ट करते हैं टेररिज्म में इन्वाल होते हैं उनके ऊपर शेड्यूल फोर लगाने की बजाय यहाँ पर नेशनल स्टूड के ऊपर लगाया फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच राइट टू एजुकेशन प्रॉपर्टी राइट्स और इवन राइट ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट इज फॉरन टू दीपल ऑफ गिलगित बल्तिस्तान Pakistan has for decades been plundering its resources and giving people nearly zero returns. Activists claim anybody who dares to raise voice against this discrimination is subjected to intimidation, arrest and imprisonment. In news from Afghanistan, earthquake survivors recovered bodies and struggled to come to grips with their loss and Taliban officials surveyed the aftermath of a massive earthquake that struck eastern provinces of Afghanistan, which has killed at least 1,000 people. The 6.1 magnitude quake on Wednesday has left more than 1,500 injured and authorities were bracing for casualty numbers to grow as information trickles in from remote mountain villages. Aid began arriving on Thursday in a remote part of Afghanistan where an earthquake killed 1,000 people, but poor communications and a lack of proper routes are hampering relief efforts in a country already grappling with a humanitarian crisis. The magnitude 6.1 earthquake struck early on Wednesday about 160 kilometers southeast of capital Kabul in arid mountains dotted with small settlements near the border with Pakistan. The earthquake injured some 1,500 people, reports suggest. More than 3,000 houses were destroyed. People in Paktika province dug graves to bury the dead on Wednesday. Houses were reduced to rubble and bodies sweated in blankets lay on the ground after earthquake. The rescue operation will be a major test for the hardline Islamist Taliban authorities who took over the country last August after two decades of war and have been cut off from much international assistance because of sanctions. The Taliban-led Ministry of Defense is leading rescue efforts. Meanwhile, as the United Nations called for more support to Afghanistan, South Korea's foreign ministry said on Thursday that Seoul plans to provide 1 million US dollars in humanitarian assistance to victims of the earthquake in Afghanistan. The Japanese government also plans to provide assistance to Afghanistan, a government spokesperson said on Thursday. Wednesday's quake was the deadliest in Afghanistan since 2002. 
Large parts of South Asia are seismically active because a tectonic plate known as the Indian plate is pushing north into the erosion plate. Moving on, Sri Lanka's economy has completely collapsed, Prime Minister Ranil Vikrami Singhe told the parliament on Wednesday as the crisis hit nation faces an increasingly dire situation that has left its 22 million people struggling with fuel, electricity and food shortages. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikrama Singhe told the parliament on Wednesday that country's economy has completely collapsed and the only safe option is to hold discussions with the IMF International Monetary Fund and arrive at an agreement to obtain an additional credit facility. We are now facing a far more serious situation beyond the mere shortage of fuel, gas, electricity and food. Our economy has faced a complete collapse, he said. Vikrame Singhe called on all parties to come together to recover the country from the catastrophic economic situation. He also called on the citizens to contribute to the efforts to rebuild the country from the areas it has fallen into today. The island nation of 22 million people is struggling with its worst economic crisis in seven decades, unable to import essential including food, fuel and medicines because of a severe shortage of foreign exchange. The dearth of basic necessities and spiralling inflation has stroked public unrest, pushing PM Vikram Singhe's government to redouble efforts to bring in assistance from the likes of the IMF and friendly countries. In the capital, Colombo, dozens protested outside his residence, demanding his resignation amid soaring prices for daily goods and petrol. At an empty clothing bazaar in downtown Colombo, vendors bemoaned bad business and a lack of customers. Sri Lanka, with suspended payments on $12 billion of foreign debt in April, is seeking around $3 billion from the International Monetary Fund to put its public finances on track and access bridge financing. The government will call China, India and Japan to a donor conference to drum up more foreign assistance and present an interim budget in August, Vikram Singhe told the parliament on Wednesday. India reported as many as 13,313 cases of coronavirus infection in the past 24 hours, according to the Health Ministry data on Thursday. The new infections have taken country's overall COVID-19 numbers to 43 million, 524,941 deaths and 83,990 active cases. The three states which have registered the maximum numbers are Southern Kerala, followed by Western Maharashtra and capital New Delhi. Amid rising COVID-19 cases across the country, Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia chaired a review meeting with core team of experts on Thursday. The Health Minister had earlier reviewed the progress of the vaccination exercise Har Ghar Dastak 2.0 campaign to expedite COVID-19 vaccination coverage through door-to-door -door campaigns. He stated that the five-fold strategy of test, track, treat, vaccination and adherence to COVID-appropriate behaviour needs to be continued and monitored by states and union territories. A hotelier in southern India has replaced window fans with solar panels on his hotel building to curb pollution and save electricity. He says he has been saving nearly 40 kilowatts and in this way, he is contributing towards saving the environment. Narayana Rao, a hotelier in India's southern Vishakhapatnam city, has replaced window pans with solar panels on his hotel in a bid to save electricity and curb pollution by relying less on natural resources like coal. Rao on Wednesday said his five-storey guest house is equipped with 201 solar panels. It has cost him over $50,000 to fit them and the initiative has made him a net exporter of electricity. He said he is saving 40 kilowatt and in this way, he is also contributing towards saving the environment. Environment to glass or eco panel lagane se environment ko mai pura 40 kilowatt jo power hai, or natural power lena padega. Or natural power banta hai ek to koila se, dusra anudharmik ka hota hai, ek to jal se hota hai. Ye isne mere kam se kam mera 40 kilowatts ka jo mai mera use hai, wo to mai kar kam kar sakta hu. Yani meri taraf se. At present, 
Forty percent of India's installed electricity capacity comes from renewable sources like solar, wind, and hydro. Solar energy is seen as a cost-effective, efficient, and easy to implement way to meet India's rising energy demands. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.